Did you know that 736 million women experience domestic violence globally? Of that amount, there are girls. And that means that one in three women globally suffer from or have experienced some form of domestic violence. And that's why I am so protective of my own girls. Stay tuned to hear part two of my story. Welcome to a brand new series on our channel, Daughters of Sheba Foundation, Everything Women. This series dives deep into the powerful and authentic story of Claudette, who will share her life journey from as far back as she can remember, starting at just two years old, to her present day experiences. Through this series, Claudette will unpack the complexities, challenges, and triumphs of being a woman navigating through life's diverse stages. From childhood and adolescence to career growth, childhood essay, motherhood, marriages, mental health challenges, domestic violence, financial ruin, restoration, and now in her 60s, she will candidly reveal how she broke through societal stereotypes and embraced her true self. Each episode will shed light on the untold realities of women's lives, offering insights, lessons, and inspiration to women of all ages. This series is not just a reflection of one woman's life, but a testament to the resilience and strength shared by many. Join us as we go beyond the surface and explore the real life experiences that shape who we are as women. Hi, so um, I have, <laughs> again delayed in in getting back to you all with um, the rest of my story and uh, I, I keep saying that I didn't think it was going to be this hard to tell this story but here we go so as I said in the opening one in three women globally um, suffer at the hands of a domestic abuser an intimate partner, a family member, it could be a dad, it could be a brother, it could be an uncle, and we're talking um, man against woman violence. Now, I had this experience, and in all fairness, I must say, it was not, my mother was never a pushover. So, um, the my first experience of witnessing domestic violence I witness it between my mother and her husband, and that in itself is, a, is another piece of a story which I'll tell you just now. So, the story of my mother and father is that they met on the job. I think I've told this portion of the story before. Anyway, I'm not going to go into all of that, but they met on the job, and when I was six weeks old, according to my mother, she had to run away with me from the house that or the apartment that she and my father built on his parents' property. So um, she ran off with me when I was six weeks old. Did I say six months? I meant six weeks old. So my and her, her and my journey started at six weeks old. Then remember in the last video, I told you about my... Um, flashback when I remember being essayed at just over two years old or somewhere about there well we were living um, like at this we were sharing a house let us say we were sharing a house and um, she would later get married and that was when I experienced my first situation of domestic violence so my mother and my now stepfather they got married. I, I have no recollection of the wedding or anything. I only know that her name became Mrs. Howard. And we were living together. Now they had now rented a house next door to the one where I recall being essayed as a two year old, meaning I later recall being essayed. So we were living at the house next door. It was a nice little cottage, a two bedroom, whatever. I mean, looking back, I remember that. I don't recall any fights or anything in the marriage, but obviously the marriage wasn't going well because by the time I was 
maybe about four. You know, they were together for a while. Um, by the time I was about four, maybe five, um, that's when it happened. The big thing happened. I remember waking up and going into the washroom and saw it. And I was in such shock to see this. I was confused, actually. I was more confused than I was shocked seeing this. Now, imagine being five, six years old, waking up, going into the washroom, and for some reason, I don't know why, I looked in the bathtub and there was all of somebody's clothes in the bathtub in a pan we call it wash pan back then in jamaica there was um, a wash pan with somebody's clothes all in it white red blue every color clothes they were all mixed soaking as if somebody was about to wash but there it, it that wasn't what was happening that wasn't what was about to happen and i was like huh so that happened one day Again, I didn't hear any fighting. I didn't see any fighting. I don't know what was going on, but something was going on. Then it could have been a couple of days later. I don't know. I was a kid. I don't remember how, how time passed. And this time I went again into the washroom. I don't remember the time of the day, but I went again into the washroom. And another set of clothes, a different set of clothes. The first set had disappeared and another set of clothes was soaking again. This time it was my mom's clothes that was soaking, I believe. The first time if it was his, the second time it was my mom's clothes that was soaking, getting ready to be washed. And I was like, what the hell? Again, I'm five, six years old. I don't know what is going on. Time passed, fast forward, time passed, and nothing happened, just, just this incident. But I was in shock because I was confused. I was, why his clothes, then her clothes in the bathtub, you know? I remember as a kid wondering about this. Why was this happening? You know, and this can be the most confusing thing for your child when there's a situation in a family and nobody's telling you what's going on. Holy Fast forward years, um, maybe four years or more, and we are now living at a different house in the same neighborhood, living at a different house, um, many blocks. And I lived at this house for much longer. Um, this new house for much longer by which time I'm now in here in Canada we would call it elementary school I'm now in elementary school and that's when I knew that there was a problem really there was a problem I would hear the fights I would hear the swearing I would hear the slamming of the door and Mr. Howard would go away and days I wouldn't see him and so forth. I would later learn that he had a problem with me. I was his, I was her only child and he had a problem with the fact that she was so much into me. Everything was for me. She had an insurance policy. It was for me and all of that. And this is part of the reason why they were fighting because she was earning good money. But he had a problem with her focus on me. So, um, the long and short of it is things just got worse. And this was this, the entire period of this marriage between my mom and this man. So she got married to him maybe when I was two and a half, three maybe. And they were together until I was 10, 10 years old, 11 years old. 
and I even started going to high school. He was pleasant enough to me, but it wasn't warm and fuzzy. And they were having problems, bills weren't being paid. There was another situation where the bailiff came and took our furniture because the bills weren't paid. She had a business, my mom, she had a, a restaurant. Um, downtown Kingston and then she got hospitalized and she was in a hospital woman woman thing for a long time and he didn't pay the bills so she lost the business and all that so it was just a nasty messy marriage and that was the first time of my life that entire let's say 10 year period of my life where I realized and I got to learn how messy marriages can be how violence come into marriages because my mother I'm, I'm going to be honest my mother was not someone to be messed with so if he threw a punch she would throw 10 and I'm just being honest and she could be as much as a, an aggressor as he was and um, he didn't come across as an aggressor but he was a cheater he had other relationships he had an entire another life going on which we would later learn about but the funny part of the story of this story and let me wrap up with that so they eventually um got a divorce and um heading back home <laughs> um she they eventually got a divorce and years passed you know um maybe another five years passed after they got a divorce and he worked with Brinks at the time and while on the job oh as I'm telling the story I'm realizing the parallels because the same thing happened to me because my last husband um, was in security and he got SHOT the same thing happened to my mother's husband prior to me so history repeated itself fortunately he did not pass away but he was crippled from the waist down they were separated he had gone on gone his ways I found out that he had another marriage while he was still married to her this was just such a mess he committed bigamy but whatever and but that woman left him and eventually um, when he got SHOT, he crippled from the waist down. Guess who took him in? Yes, my mother. She took him in. <laughs> so he came back to live at the house and um, just for a bit because they couldn't get on. The, 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 the war started again. The war started again. So he, maybe after six months, he left. <laughs> So, the moral of the story, uh, or I should say the many moral of this story is never marry someone out of desperation or because you feel that your child needs a father figure. I know, I know, I know all the statistics and all of that about single mothers and all of that, but never do that because that's what my mother did and that's what she told me that she wanted to have a father figure in my life well this man wasn't it he didn't abuse me or anything but he hated her affection for me he wanted everything that she had for himself I, he never had any other children as far as I know well up to that time and it just didn't work it just doesn't work and that's the moral of that's one of the moral of the story the other moral of the story is, if the relationship is not working, call it quits and go your way. Call it quits and go your way. Instead of fighting, instead of soaking each other's clothes in a bathtub, because that's how it began with them, you know, instead of the drama, instead of you stealing his money or he stealing your money and not paying the bills, just say, listen, this isn't working and go your separate ways. Um, and then just escape. Um, don't, if you were with someone and they, something happened to them and they get, I know the Christian thing to do is to help them out, but do it from a distance. Don't think that you need to bring the person into your house or move into their house and you're going to, um, be together and, and help each other out because that doesn't work either that doesn't work either um, 
my mother tried it and the same reason why they left each other in the beginning is the same reason why even crippled they could not get along so he stayed with us for six months and then he was gone just wish each other farewell a fun farewell sayonara this is not going to work i am here if you need a friend i am here i will be, be there, there when I... but don't don't so that's that leg of my journey um, with my mother and her first husband, not my father, her first husband, and um, how I learned about domestic strife, domestic drama, um, domestic violence, because there was violence on both parts. And it set the tone for me for what my future relationships would be. And as I was sharing this story with you, I got a, my own aha moment to realize that history repeated itself between my mother and I in that she got married to somebody in security. I did the same thing. The person she got married to in security was SHOT. Same thing happened to me. Unfortunately, the person who I got married to was unalived. Until next time, thank you for watching. If this meant anything to you if you got anything from this video please like and share subscribe for sure and um, be sure to join me make sure you watch the previous videos there are two the introduction and part one where i shared my recollection my flashback of being essayed as a two-year-old and see you next time bye Make sure to subscribe, tune in, and be part of this empowering journey.